I'm here in my truck and I'm excited to say I'm headed to Lake of the Woods. I am going ice camping for the first time in the 2023-2024 ice season. I called the resort up there, Adrian's Resort, I have no affiliation with, and they're letting me get out. I've got the core ice shack with me. And since it's a hybrid and I can drop it down to be a skid house, they're letting me take it out with the ATV. So I can't wait. Let's get on the road six-ish hours to get up there. I'll pop the camera back on when we get up there show you how I drop the house down and how we're getting out onto the ice. But I get to be one of the first out ice camping in my own ice house uh, on Lake of the Woods this year. I'm really excited about it. This is gonna be fun. Let's go. Headed up north to Lake of the Woods and just wanted to stop here in Deer River, Minnesota. Look at this, open water, so much of it. I'll put a clip in here too of Lake Mille Lacs. I stopped by on the way up. Uh, so you can see the lake out there. There was a boat actually launching as well. We'll roll that clip now too. We're headed to Lake of the Woods and we are ice camping and it is not gonna be on open water. It will be on ice. Let's go. All right, here we are on Lake of the Woods out of Adrian's Resort uh, Access. They're not allowing any wheelhouses out yet, but since this guy goes down into skid mode, we're allowed to take it out with the ATV today. So I already took the fenders off. Now we're gonna pop the wheels up, we're gonna put it in skid mode, and we're gonna get over to the spot where we're gonna be ice camping the next several days. Let's go ahead and lower her down. I don't have enough height out of that jack due to the way that the tongue is going down. So we're gonna go ahead and lift her up just until that wheel comes loose. Stop and check the wheel. Oh, that's good enough. Now we can pop the pin out. Lock her back into place and you can see the door still opens and shuts. Now we're gonna lower this guy back down. We're gonna go to the other side. All right, now we gotta do the tongue. Okay, now we can lower these. There we go. Just like that, we're in skid mode. We're gonna go ahead and take her out on the ice now. Let's do a quick walk around. This is what she looks like on the ground. Hoo and it's a free Free tongue, so we're good to go. All right, now let's get over Pine Island. All right, so we are out here. It was a journey getting out here. I should have rolled the camera, but I didn't. If you know Lake of the Woods, and we'll throw a map up and maybe some images or something, or if I can get a drone shot, we'll throw it over here. But coming out of Adrian's Resort, there's a Bay Area, and then there's Pine Island. Pine Island is sand right sand dirt so i had to put this core ice house into skid mode to bring it out because they're not letting wheelhouses out so i put it into skid mode came across the bay and i was like i'm just gonna get her going right over pine island it's not that far maybe 100 feet 200 feet i think in in width that you got to get over and then you get back down on the ice on the other side of the island so it's like a pass through and i got the trailer stuck uh just coming on and here's the worst part it's the end of the day sun is setting and all the resorts are trying to get back all other people off, right? So all the shuttles are going back and forth from their day houses. And of course, I'm blocking pretty much the entire way to get the passageway through the island. So I had to quickly, as quickly as I could, having done this my first trip out, I had to quickly uh, disconnect from the ATV, pick it back up, get it back on the wheels, get it hooked back up, get it pulled over on wheels to the other side of the island, drop back down to the ice, and then skidded back out here and I, now it's pitch black out. It is currently, and I'm full of mud and sand every, like, like look at my watch. 
It's like mud and sand freaking everywhere on this thing. Um, I was digging in the ground. I was just trying to get out of everybody's way as fast as I could. Um, I'm covered, my jacket's covered, my boots are covered. It was dark out and there's ice heaves out here that you can't really see. Fortunately, I got the light bar on my ATV. I got out here, we're about a mile out. I augered the holes, covered them back up because I want to get everything situated in here before I start dropping down and fishing. Otherwise, this is going to take forever to get set up. So as you can see behind me, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll roll the camera here while I'm getting things situated. Everything that was up top fell off. I took out the cushions for those the back dinette because I'm not going to use the dinette. I've got the table in the front closet that I'll put in and then I'll just sit on the corner here like this and I'll be able to have my laptop up and I'll be able to work on the dinette table or eat from it because it kind of stretches out here. I'm going to do that. That way I can leave these up. I think what I need to do and I'm going to make a list this trip so I know what to do when I get home is I'm going to take both of these out, both of these benches out. So that way I can use the core rail behind it to put more accessories up. So I think that's one big thing that I need to do, but I need to get everything situated here, things underneath there. I need to get the live scope set up. All that I've done so far, I augured my holes. Of course the house is down. I put a bunch of stuff back up there. I'm also gonna take this uh, mattress out. I wanna leave the bunk up here cause it's great for storage. That's the one thing I wish there was more storage. And I know you can buy racks and things for it, but it would be nice if it just came with a couple of racks, but I guess that's added cost. People should just buy what they want with it. And I obviously didn't get those things. So I might uh, make my own. I'm not really interested in spending the money on buying them uh, right now. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I might get a net when I get home and put a net or a couple straps or something from that side to that side to hold everything in. Cause when I was skidding out here, all that stuff fell down uh, onto the floor. So we're gonna get everything cleaned up here. Might roll this in fast speed or whatever, uh, but we will uh, we'll be fishing here in no time. Oh, this is awesome. These five gallon buckets slide right under, if I take this out, they will slide underneath the couch. Look at that. I brought a small angle cooler, seven and a half, and then I picked up a lot of bait and I realized they're gonna die real quick and I think I already lost a few shiners, unfortunately, because they didn't have enough space. So I gotta get a cup and I'm gonna fill up that bucket with some lake water. All right, I'm gonna leave that cup back here. I got a lot of stuff. So you can see, that's how I'm gonna use the table. Just be able to sit right there. All right, now I'll show you just how easy it is to get AC power in here. And we're gonna turn the inverter on. And we can see we got 12.8 volts, which is good. Now we come down by the bottom batteries where I've got a cord marked inverter, which leads up to the top inverter. I unplug the house shore power cord that goes to the shore power and I plug it into here and we should hear the microwave click. There it is. Shove that back in there. 12.8 volts. Now the reason we wanted to do that is not because we wanted the microwave to be on. I could care less about that. It doesn't pull very much power. But for this trip, we've got Verizon up here. This is a mobile hotspot. Uh, so we've got 5G internet if we have 5G service out here, otherwise it'll default to 4G. You can see up here, we've got this outlet in this top cabinet. That is what is powering our internet. And that's what's powering our Google TV that I'm gonna be able to pull up here so we can stream whatever we want through that internet. And we're gonna be able to do a live stream this trip probably on Saturday. So that'll be fun. And then I've also got a Google Home Chromecast thing over here so we can say, hey Google. I can't connect to the Wi-Fi network. You might wanna check the connection settings in the Google Home app. Evidently the internet is not up and running yet, so we'll have to give that a second, but that's kind of fun uh, to play around with. That is why we wanted the AC power is primarily to be able to plug in that guy up there, power the Google Home, which I could power off of USB, but, and then this guy here, so. That's where we're at. Let's go ahead and get a line down. Well, 
Should we check and see how much ice we got? We are sitting on 11 inches of ice. Looks like we might have a couple fish down there. Let's turn these lights down a little bit. All right, we're gonna drop a line down and see if we can't catch whatever this is down there and get the first Lake of the Woods fish for the year. I have no clue what it was going to be. What do we got here? Clam Time Bomb Pink. Yes, uh, and this is on a Paleo Walleye Rod. This one actually glows in the dark, which is pretty sweet. I'll have to maybe show you that later. They look like they're off the screen, but we should be able to show the screen because uh, I've got it recording so you can see what I see. But they probably didn't move far. They were hugging the bottom. They didn't look massive. We are in about 25 feet of water. What I'm going to do is throw down, this looks like a dead shiner. So I'm just going to dorsal hook this shiner and we're gonna see what we can do. This is a pink clam time bomb. Fortunately, I got the glow on my summit shuttle. So we'll glow this up because I'm pretty sure this is a glow lure. All right, we can see it over there to the left, four feet over. That might be this hole. So we're gonna go ahead, see what we can do here. There it is, showing up about 16 feet down. The live scope's not in perfect line with it, but that is okay, because we're so deep that it can actually still uh, see it because the cone angle gets wider down there. Otherwise, what I could do is put the live scope in that hole, have a dead stick. That's actually not a bad idea. Got a couple things coming up. We're gonna pull up just a bit. Oh, he went back down. They look like they're small, probably small sauger. May as well glow it up while we got it up here. Drop her down. Get her back down there and see if they'll take the minnow head. Oh, I saw something about halfway through in the water column. That was interesting. I might have to jig a little bit higher up here in a little bit. But 7, 11 p.m., make a wish, I think is what you're supposed to say. I drop an underwater camera down, but it is so dark down there right now. It's not gonna do us any good. And the water is uh, a little bit stained, I noticed, just from filling up the bucket. So this might not be a good underwater camera lake in terms of down on the bottom fishing. I will say as of now, this heater is freaking awesome. It's continuously variable from the lowest of speed to the highest of speed, and it just keeps it at the temperature. It's not like where it fluctuates one degree low, one degree high, or two plus or minus. It just keeps you there, and it's just very, very efficient. I had it running while I was driving it to the lake, so it was already, I had it set to 52 in here, so everything in here was 52 degrees when we got here which was super nice. All right, I think I'm gonna put a live minnow down as a dead stick over there. So I've got a tuned up custom rods dead stick. I've got a demon jig glow chartreuse with a pink dot on it. I got a little weight on it. I've got an Akuma Seamar CBF 500. So it's a bait feeder reel, which I really like. So let's get a lively one, not a big one. It's a fat head. Down she goes. Should be showing up here anytime. Oh, we got a fish coming up for this rod, ah, I think I distracted it by throwing this live one down there. That's all right, as long as it hits one of them. Grab another rod holder. Let's open up the bait feeder. We gotta come a little higher up though. We don't wanna be in the floor. All right, so we can see we do have something under our jigging rod. So on the right is my dead stick with a fat head, and on the left is my jigging rod that that thing was obviously interested in looking at, but not interested in eating. All right, the fish aren't biting right now, so we're gonna cook dinner. I'm doing a pizza tonight, so we're gonna go ahead and get the oven preheated. I'm gonna grab a pizza. I've got it laying out on the ice right now. Grab the pizza, get it in there, and we're gonna eat here in a little bit. All right, says preheat to 400. This is propane. Preheat to 400. There we go, we got her on 400. Give her a few minutes to get heated up. We'll cut this open. See if I got a knife. We do, we have a pizza cutter. Just finishing cooking my pizza and it looks like we got a fish playing with our dead stick minnow. This may be the first fish of the trip. Bait feeder's open, so it should be pulling if he hits it and gets on it. I'm gonna go over to my jigging rod real quick and just see if I can jig him in. No clue what it is. 
hopefully a mega wall high. But based off of the look of it, it's not. Something coming in from the left now, too. Hooked up, first fish. Feels pretty decent. Oh, it got off! No! I was trying to do too many things at once. Gosh, that stinks. That felt pretty good, too. Ah! Alright, going back down. I was just getting ready to eat my pizza. Got it made up. It uh, came out of the oven. It's still super hot. It's like a lots of matzah, but I think it's a different brand. Uh, looks good, but I didn't want to burn my mouth already, so I'm letting it sit. And so I grabbed my jigging rod, and then that fish came in, and then I lost it halfway up, which really stunk. But looks like we might have a couple more coming in. That was the first fish to be interested in the jigging rod at all. All the others so far have been more interested in the dead stick, or they're just cruising across the bottom, which makes me think that they're not walleye. Uh, the ones that are just cruising bottom, they're probably like maybe eel powder or something like that. It is night. It's 8.30, it's dark out, 25 feet of water. Who knows what we're getting into? I will say, the screen was very dead when I wasn't jigging. I've got a clam time bomb spoon on here, uh, which makes a lot of noise. I'm hoping one of these fish come hit while I'm talking. Look at that, look at that fish around the bottom coming in. That looks about the same size as the one that I had on before. So maybe he's coming back through uh, and he hit my jigging rod. That's over by the dead stick right now. I've got a fat head on that with like a demon jig. And it looks like there's maybe two fish coming up to it, one from either side. Maybe I'll get one to come over here or we're gonna get a double header, that would be fun. Not trying to compete with myself, but I just don't want them to lose interest in one and then go away. Hopefully it's they lose interest in one and they come to the other. Ah, can't believe I lost that first fish. That felt good too, but I've also not caught a walleye this season, so it may have been deceiving. It's like the 80-20 rule. You, you're allowed to go up to 80% towards it, but it's got to do the other 20%. All right, we have a fish for some reason. My bait feeder isn't going. Oh, it's shut, that's why. Here we go. Fish on. Fish on. Feels like a good walleye, maybe. Ah, there's some head shakes. Burbot. Just a little burbot. Well, here we go. First fish of the trip is a burbot at 1242 AM. Well, here he is. Just a small guy, but hey, we'll take a nice little burbot. All right, got the first fish out of the way. Now we'll get the set line back down there. Try to catch a couple Z's here before morning. And then uh, I'm sure tomorrow's gonna be a great day. Now that we cracked the egg, if you will, uh, we are gonna get into some walleye in the morning. I feel good about it. And it just goes to show a lot of those fish that I was seeing earlier on the bottom, I can almost guarantee you were burbot as well. They weren't wanting to come off the way that they were looking and acting. It makes a lot of sense. So we'll go ahead and get another line back down there and uh, see if we can't catch maybe a walleye overnight. Otherwise, I'm totally okay with sleeping tonight. We're waking up early in the morning, so we'll see you in the morning. All right, I just woke up to a fish that just hit this rod. So we're gonna... Try and get her in. Gotta get it tight. Got him. It's feeling burbity again. It's not fighting like a walleye. Head shakes though. 
Maybe it is. Ooh, it is a walleye. Nice. Nice. First walleye of the ice season. All right, look at that fish. That's a nice Lake of the Woods walleye right there. Woo! All right, we're gonna get a measure on it. 20 and a half inches. 20 and a half inches. Nice. All right. We'll let her get going here. Let's see her go. See you later, baby girl. Been gone. Woo! All right. First Lake of the Woods walleye. First walleye for the season and a 20 and a half inch. I'll take it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it is officially the first full day. Woke up 7.30 a.m. I gotta get ready, put the contacts in, brush the teeth, clean up a little bit here, maybe grab a protein bar, and then we're gonna get to fishing. Uh, there have been vehicles driving around out here, lots of cracking of the ice last night. Rough night's sleep, but those two fish that I caught overnight were definitely awesome. So we're gonna get into some good ones. I'm hoping, typically, Lake of the Woods, you've got a really good morning bite right around sunup time to about midday, kind of around noon, and then it slows up a little bit for that midday lull. So, so I wanna get a couple things going here, and then I'll pop the camera back on. All right, we're in pretty good shape here. Got cleaned up for the day. I actually have a fish. Just making sure the live scope's recording. I got a fish coming in here to my dead stick. We'll see if it hits. I'm gonna eat up some breakfast here. This is what we're having out on the ice, in the core ice house. We got some OJ. Who doesn't love a big glass of OJ? We've also got a Nature Valley Cashew granola bar. Love those things. We got our multivitamin. You gotta get that. And a Yoplait. I usually uh, eat the Yoplait light. This is strawberry. But, you know, when you're eating gas station food on the way up and you're picking up stuff, you gotta deal with what they got, so. I'm gonna scarf these down. I'm gonna hopefully jig one of these two lines that I have down now, uh, and then we're gonna put a jigging rod down. We're gonna sit here for a little bit this morning, see if we can't get that uh, morning bite uh, to hit. Otherwise, we will definitely pick up and move today, uh, and we're gonna make a plan of attack on exactly what we're going after. So let me get this food down in my stomach. All right, getting camera set up, and we got a fish on the dead stick. 9.45, doesn't look big, we'll let it pull, I think it let go, it let go, let's see if it comes back, and there it is, oh, ripped her right out, these are small sauger, guaranteed, wonder if we still have our bait. Feeling a little light. Yep. Minnow's gone. So, that means it is time to get a jigging rod down. That is exactly what we're gonna do. All right, so we're gonna put down a jigging rod and we're gonna try the clam time bomb spoon again because this guy uh, the last couple of years has been just a money maker in terms of catching the fish for me. So we're going to try it again this year. I didn't have success with it last night, but I also didn't have any success jigging last night. And the only two fish that I caught that you guys know was overnight. So I'm seeing fish on the screen. They're rolling in a little bit of a later start than I thought. I would have thought they'd be here much sooner. All right. So what we're gonna do is a minnow head. So ideally not a shiner, but we'll do a fat head maybe. Here we go. Slice and dice the head. Let's let that guy down there. All right, let's see how this works, huh? <coughs> it's dropping down. I might need to, I'm gonna see if I can leave that window open behind me, but if it gets really bad, I might need to shut it. Here we go. 
I like to jig it pretty aggressively when I'm down there. So last night that you saw was my first time ever out on the ice with this ice house. This is a Core Ice 6515 hybrid skid wheel house. And I have to tell you, I didn't even put this bed down. I left it up like this, threw a couple pillows over there, had a blanket so I could stare at the live scope screen all night. It was really nice being inside of an ice house with a vented heater, with some lighting in it, electrical. I had the TV playing YouTube last night. Uh, so I was, uh, I was spoiled to say the least in this ice house. So what I'm gonna do today, today's all about trying to get into the fish. So I'm sure we'll move around here today. I'll show you how easy this thing is to move um, in skid mode. We're gonna show you this house today. Uh, I'll do a tour here after I catch another fish or two. We'll do a quick walk around. I'll do an in-depth review of this so that way you can see how I've got my ice camping set up. I'll probably film that tomorrow after I get a couple things cleaned up. But today in this video, I'll make sure that I show you how I have it set up now, how I had it set up for the first night in it. Uh, and I'll make sure that you get to see how it moves around the ice, moving from spot to spot. So that is our plan today. Let's get into some walleye. Heck, let's get into some burbot, crappie, and perch as well, if we can, some pike. Here we go. Is that a fish coming over? Zoom in. See if we can't pick him off. He looks like a small little guy, probably a small sauger. Really tight lipped. And this is that clam time bomb spoon with the minnow head. Oh, here we go. too busy looking around outside. I'm getting swarmed out here. There's not a lot of the lake because there was a break. I'm about a mile out after Pine Island here and uh, there's a lot of people coming out and I think that they see this house and they're like, oh, that guy's been here all night. There's probably safe ice and probably fish over there by him. So there's a ton of people by me. I'll throw the drone up in a little while here and get some good footage too. What's this thing up here at 18 feet? Can we get him to come back to us? That's the question. Is he going for the dead stick? Look at this guy coming off the bottom. He's coming up. I bet he sees the jig up here. Oh, he's going back down. Interesting. Oh, I think he was nibbling on it. Got him. I think this is a different one though, but hey, we got a fish. We're happy. A uh, little sauger, tiny little sauger. This is what we're dangling with. These little, little tiny guys. Yep. See you later. All right, well, Clam time bomb spoon worked. We'll get another uh, minnow head on there because he took that one. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. May as well glow it up, huh? Glow it up. I've got a new glow cup I was gonna try too. I got a new glow cup from Ice Hole Power I was gonna try. So I'll get that going here once I get this line down and I'll show it to you here. It's like a little square cube thing. I think it just plugs into USB. You might need a USB cable for it. All right, had to shut that window, but here it is, ice hole power, it's a cube. On this side, you've got your on off switch. On this side, you've got a USB-C port. Uh, just a square bottom top and you can see the glow. So it doesn't come with a cable, so I obviously have a USB-C cable. I have not used this at all yet. All right, so it's off, now it's on. So it's just like their normal glow cup. So my thought is I'll just throw it down here on the floor. I'll plug it into this power box that I have with. I don't really need this power box. I need a couple more USB ports in here so I'll have to run a couple cables. Uh, but that actually works pretty good. But I don't know, like this UV light that comes with the uh, Summit HD shuttle definitely seems to put off a lot more light. So we'll see how well it does. But we got a fish down here coming over to my jigging rod. 
So let's see if we can't jig them up. I'm sure it's another small sauger. But activity is key. If you're not on activity, that means something's wrong and you need to move. If you've got even small fish coming in, that is a good sign that there's probably something in the area for bigger fish to want to come in for. Um, we are in the flats area of the lake, so there's not much rock or mud or uh, transitions or anything like that. It's uh, pretty, you know, uh, steady yet slow uh, drop off in the water here, and we're at about 25 feet. Oh, we got another one rolling in from the left on the bottom. Check it out. Oh, here we go. Hooked up. This one feels a little bit better than that last sauger, at least. Feels saugery, though. Yeah, good, better size sauger, though. Clam time bomb doing work again. Decent sized sauger. Sauger don't get as big as walleye. I gotta see if this is part of my tournament. This is not gonna be the thumbnail, but it is the biggest sauger I've caught this ice season. Just for kicks and giggles, let's see how big it actually is. We're sitting at, with the mouth closed, 12 and a half inches. Letting her go. See you later. Let's see what glowing this thing up in that glow cup is like. I do like that you can just set it in there though instead of having to hold it. That is nice. That is really nice. See how glowed up is it? Meh, not bad. But if we put it here, even though I gotta hold it, does it glow up more? Oh, way more. So, as convenient as that ice hole power glow cup is, it's nice. However, the light that is on this HD shuttle is incredibly powerful. Like, no match, not even a comparison. In fact, I'll show you guys on the next one the difference in a glow. I'll count to 10 out of that one, then I'll count to 10 out of this one, and I'll show you. Oh, here we go. That's a nice sized fish right there. Gonna slowly pull it up, see if he comes for it. That's a better sized fish too. Holding it steady. Here it is. Tell me you took it. I don't feel it. Oh, oh, there it is. Grab it. Oh, pulled it out. All right, so here's the jig with no glow. Notice how it doesn't stand out at all. Now I'm gonna put it in the ice hole power cup for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, now let's look at it again. All right, it's glowing pretty, pretty nicely, we can see. Some good glow to it, right? Not bad, not bad. Okay, now I'm gonna put it, the Summit HD Shuttle one for 10 seconds, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Look at that thing. Night and day difference. Look at it. Wow, crazy. So nothing against the ice hole power glow cup. It's nice, it works, it's convenient. You can drop your jig in it and just let it sit there. Whereas the other one, you've got to hold it up to the light, which is kind of a hassle. But the Summit Shuttle light is much stronger and can charge it much better in the same amount of time. That's the one that I'm gonna continue to use. Uh, but this cup might be good when I have an extra guy or two with. Uh, it's convenient, I like how small it is. Square, little thing. You can see it's got a glow interior too, so I just unplugged it. So obviously that's glow inside of it, which is pretty cool, that white material. Maybe if they put extra of the strips in here, they could get it to glow brighter or change out the LED strips that they use in here to be stronger, not sure, but 
it gets the job done, so they probably won't do anything with it. It's nice and convenient. I'll leave a link to it down below if you're interested in checking it out, but uh, yeah. New product from them. I don't remember what it's called, like the ice cube or something like that, but pretty cool. All right, it's 1.15. Let's see if we can't jig something up here. Otherwise, we're gonna move to another spot. I don't really know where, and there's a lot of ice heaves around me, and I can't really get too much further out in terms of deeper because of the fact that there used to be a pretty big crack there, and it's only a few inches thick now, and they don't want, like, there's nothing past the crack. I've got to stay on this side of it where we've got a good amount of ice. I just don't know how to get around some of these heaves. I can maybe get out to 26 feet, 27 feet. I might disconnect the ATV from the house first. In fact, that's what I will do before I load anything up. I'll pull the lines up so they're not down while I'm gone, but I'll grab, I'll put the chest cam on, I'll drive around on the ATV, see if I can find a deeper spot. I got an Active Captain app for Garmin in the mapping on my phone, so I'll be able to see depths out there. And then if that pans out, I will come back, throw the camera out, show you how quickly I can move this thing. I've never done it, but I know in theory, pull the live scope out of the hole, pull my rods out of the hole, shut that front door, make sure things are secure, not gonna fall, so like take my laptop off, make sure the bait, I'll probably put it in the ATV, in the side bucket, just so nothing falls while I'm gliding across the ice and that's it, go. I don't even gotta pick it up, just pull it. We'll see, I wanna make sure that I do that. If I don't do it today, I'll do it for sure tomorrow, just to show you guys on the video, uh, but that's the plan and I'm jigging and I'm not seeing anything. So I think I'm gonna go hop outside, let's get a chest cam on, let's go outside and see what we can find. There's a ton of people that are on me because this is like as far out as you can get right now. But I saw a couple guys venture out in another area that maybe it's not past the crack, so we'll find out. Stay tuned. It's beautiful out, holy smokes. <clears throat> Here we are, Lake of the Woods, between 20 and 25 feet on this side of that crack right here. None of the resorts are letting anybody across unless you only have a portable. They have none of their houses passed here. It is a crack that used to be about 30 feet wide. It's now a few inches wide and only a few inches deep, but there's a south wind and they're worried about it breaking away. So that is the update, Lake of the Woods. Pretty good, how are you? No, I'm just seeing how much further we can go out, but it looks like this is the yeah. end right here. Do you know, is Wigwam further out? No, no, they would be Wigwam that way. Yeah, but do they do they go deeper? No, they will once this crack fills up. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna go cruise that way then and see where those guys are at. All right, man. What is, what is the depth over here? Is it about 25, 26? 21. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks. Take it easy. Have a good one. Got the generator going. All right, we are back inside. I drove basically to the Canada side, all the way over to the end of the ice houses that I could see over here. And I am the only personally owned permanent out here, other than one tiny little skid house that I saw that was out here. 
uh, being hauled behind a uh, a side by side. I for sure am the first out. This thing is super light. I'm really happy that I can be out here ice camping. I don't know how many more people are out here ice camping. I think a few are. And I wonder if some of these resorts actually have sleeper shacks out here. I know there's a lot of day houses, but I saw some lights out here yesterday. Some people could be hub camping too, so you never really know. But what I can tell you is this, there is no deeper water that I can get to. So this is like the best spot. I got the oven going here. We're gonna make some Totino's pizza rolls for lunch because it's 2.40, about lunchtime. We'll go to bed late. We're gonna eat probably some of this snack tray as well. A couple of cheese sticks, maybe a protein bar, something like that. I've got a meal drink that I was drinking earlier. I must have finished it because I don't know where it is, but I'm just primarily drinking water with Mio, a little bit of caffeine in it, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get back to fishing. I got the generator started up. So what it's looking like is with the TV on, the live scope on and plugged in, my laptop plugged in, all the electronics going in here, the inverter going, so that way we can power the Chromecast, the internet, like all of these things. We get about 24 hours. If I was trying to conserve energy, I probably could have gotten through this whole trip without having to use the generator. I don't like doing that. I have a lot of electronics. They need to be charged. I like using all the stuff. I gotta do the video stuff. So we got about 24 hours out of 400 amp hours of life PO4 before it started getting to a low enough voltage where the inverter was probably gonna shut off. I don't know how much other stuff was going to shut off, but it's just, I got it with, I've got 12 gallons of fuel with as well, so we may as well use it. I'm just gonna let it run until it runs out, which is about 12 hours. It's not stressed at all. It's just a small predator uh, generator as you saw in the video, but that thing is gonna be rolling. We're gonna get a couple lines down and hopefully get into this night bite. Looks like we got a fish coming to the left here. No clue how big it is or anything, but we're going for anything right now. Oh, they're starting to pop. Probably just a couple minutes. We're gonna crack into the snack tray. Got ourselves some honey ham, some mild cheddar cheese, and some butter crisp crackers. Oh no, I lost a cheese. I'm not savage enough to eat it. Cheese ain't bad. We're gonna save the meat for tomorrow, cause I'll destroy that and I don't want it to dry out. Eat a couple crackers and cheese while we wait for them pizza rolls. <coughs> All right, here it is. Who needs a plate when you got tin foil? This is the lunch of champions right here. Mmm. I let it cool off so it didn't burn my mouth. It's perfect. All right, I'm gonna eat these. Oh, well, shoot, there's a fish underneath my dead stick. You guys see that? Is he going for it? That wasn't there 30 seconds ago. Try to leave it? Oh, pull up a little. He's coming back. Here we go, here we go. Got him. This is a better fish. I don't think I've even got the live scope on. I'm not gonna mess with it or I will probably lose him. Maybe he's not that awesome, but he looked better. I guess it's just been that long since I've caught a decent fish. It's one of our little sauger friends. That's all. Nothing too crazy. Well, time to freshen up that minnow head. Clam time bomb did the trick. There's three of them. This is good. Make sure the live scope's recording. Yep. These must just be small saugers. It's the only thing that I can think of. Otherwise, they'd be swallowing this thing. I'm sure the lights look funky. I've just got the lights really low right now because I want to be able to see outside. So I put these blue accent lights on, but, but looking at the camera, this might not be a good idea. Probably can't see very much, and it looks like there's banding in the screen because they're the wrong hurt. Got one of them. He doesn't seem very big. It's actually a small walleye. Nice to see the Walters moving in. Real small, but it is a walleye. Letting her go. That was on a tail hook, fat head on the clam time bomb spoon. So this is the one that I'm catching them all on. Granted, I haven't tried a ton of different ones, but this is the guy out of my two rods that I've been using. It's consistently working. The other one I keep changing up but this is the one that's working. Here it's coming vertical. This is good, should take it. Yep, got it. Doesn't feel massive though. It is a little better, but it's not big. It is a walleye, little guy, but it is a walleye. I'm actually gonna throw this one on the measure board just to see how long it really is, but what we caught, this little guy right here. Walleye! Maybe a little too small for an eater, but I'm interested to know how long it is. It's 11 and a half. We'll let her go. See if you can see her swim away on the live scope. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. It all just depends because the cone angle on the live scope 
doesn't actually pick up those holes until you're 10 feet down. So if it darts off that direction or either way that way, you won't see it. And I didn't see it go down and it shot off right away. So interesting. All right, let's turn this back off. That way I am not blinded by the light. And that was a uh, tail hooked minnow. So let's keep doing that. All right, so the night bite so far has not produced. We've been getting into a lot of little guys. Uh, you've probably seen a couple of those clips come through. Uh, it's slowed down on the screen and I'm not gonna just keep sitting here jigging. It's about 6.30. So what I'm gonna do is make some dinner. Tonight, we're eating some steak. So I'm gonna cook this up. Uh, I think I gotta do it on the stove. I'm gonna work on this. Hopefully we get some big fish coming through. I'll move the camera over so that you guys can see how I do this on the stove. All right, so we open up the bar. We got two steaks and yup, I'm eating both. I'm a hungry guy. And they're still frozen. This is what we're dealing with. All right, it says uh, stove. Preheat a nonstick skillet with a table teaspoon of oil. Take a damp paper towel, oil, teaspoon, got it, teaspoon. That looks like a teaspoon. We got oil going, so we're gonna open this puppy up. Oh, hello, that's a lot of sizzling. I don't think we want to fry it. So that needs to calm down a little bit there. Hey Google, set a timer for 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes. Starting now. That's why I got this thing right here. Heat thermometer. The power's on. That's always good. Yummy. Hey Google, how much time's left on the timer? T minus 12 minutes and 52 seconds. Google, how much time on the timer? There's 44 seconds remaining. Hey Google, turn off the timer. No problem. Consider the timer canceled. Here it is, steaks are done. Let's go ahead and cut into one. Yes, I'm using plastic silverware for steak on a paper plate. I think these are just sirloin. Hey, 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 look at that. Beautifully done, nice and juicy. I'd prefer it to be a little bit rarer, but hey, looks good to me. I'm gonna eat this up and then we're gonna hopefully catch a couple more fish. All right, we got a fish on. I just got done doing dishes. All right. Fish hooked up. It feels small. It's another fish. Small little walleye. On that clam time bomb spoon. Probably 11 inches. Yay! All right, letting her go. I'm telling you, this thing's doing work. I wasn't jigging it or anything. It just had a tail hook minnow on it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that again. We're gonna try to see, uh, typically what happened last night this time is we had a few fish roaming through. We ended up catching a couple of them, so let's see if we can do that again. All right, it is about 10 p.m. and we're gonna wrap today's video up. This was a fun first 24 hours out on the ice, first ice camping, first walleye, first burbot for the 2023-2024 ice season in this luxurious core ice house. I've got another video gonna be coming out on the channel that is a more in-depth walkthrough of how I've got it set up now, and I'll do another one in a couple of months once I get it really dialed in but I've got another video tomorrow I'm gonna to be filming as well as a live stream. I've got a ton of plans for this year in this house, outside of this house. We're gonna do a tip up thing outside. There's a lot of really cool things coming. So thank you again so much for watching all the way until the end. I hope that this video was entertaining for you and you got some good ideas on what your ice camping setup could look like. I'm gonna add a video on the screen right here for you to click and watch into next that's more about ice fishing and the gear and the tech that I use. Thank you so much, until next time, take it easy.